is composed of three orthologs, like three trains on a car, A, B, and C. And they have a highly conserved sequence identity amongst themselves. And these, this gene then codes for a scaffolding protein, which essentially means the protein interacts with a lot of other proteins to mediate various pathways within the, program, uh, within the plant. And um, the pathways that we focus on are the ones that deal with environmental stresses. So heat, drought, cold, salinity, and things of that nature. And what we found is that by knocking out the gene, the plant becomes more resistant to those environmental stresses. So the aim of our research is to have an application in agriculture and crops. However, we understand that genetically modified organisms are highly controversial. So we had to figure out another way to go about making the plants more resistant to environmental stresses. Understanding this, our mentor, Dr. Ula, looked through a chemical database and found a chemical called SD29. SD29 is a small lead-based molecule that binds to the Y248 site on the protein, preventing tyrosine phosphorylation and simulation, key processes for the formation of the protein, thereby chemically knocking it out. And, um... significant why the finding yeah. oh this finding was significant because essentially we figured out a way to make the plants more resistant to environmental stresses without genetically modifying them simply by adding the chemical compound to the medium or to the water as we water the plants the plants then uptake it through their roots and become more resistant and we've proven this in multiple plants um, our model organism Arabidopsis thaliana crops such as pepper um, corn beans and rice some of these experiments are displayed on our poster, such as the rice experiment. In this experiment, the rice leaves were placed into waters with 60 millimolar concentration of salt. In this, we can see that the leaves treated with salt and no SD29, the leaf died. However, when it was treated with SD29 and salt, you can see the leaf has a lot more vitality. These are also examined in the salt-induced P-REC1A, REC1A, GFP experiment above. In this experiment, green fluorescence is indicative of plant stress. So, in the experiment with no salt, you can see that there is a small fluorescence. However, once treated with salt, below. However, once treated with salt, the plant is under high stress. But once treated with salt in SD29, stress is greatly reduced, even more so than a plant with under no stress. So we've tested this um, chemical on the plants in various stages of life from germination, the seedling age, the adult age, flowering age, all throughout the plant's life and it's worked. Um, and we actually work with two sister compounds, SD29 and SD2912, and they affect the plant differently at various stages of life. So now our research is aimed at understanding on a molecular level how this is occurring, how the other pathways are affected, why one compound affects the plant in another way or is more effective at certain stages of life than the other one? And are there any adverse effects to the chemical compound or the application of the chemical compound? So the further crop? study now includes um, putting the plants under different stresses um, and different concentrations. For instance, we use sorbitol, which is a hexatol sugar, which um, acts as an antidiuretic and induces drought within the plants. And we add this in the medium, and we can add it in different concentrations, so different levels of drought, and apply the chemical and see how the plant responds at various stages of drought, to see how tolerant the plants are under with, with the aid of the chemical versus without the aid of the chemical. And as we also know, the protein is involved in various pathways within the plant. So other studies should include if it does mediate drought resistance, what else does it mediate within the plant? Or what other adverse effects does it have to the plant since the protein is so important for the plant's production and growth? And after further study, um, our, our goal is to have an application in crops. So in places that are arid or if there's a drought that year, the crops can still sustain and the people can still eat.